And you are welcome back. Thank you so much for always making it a date with us here on the show every day of the week and wrapping the day with us. We hope that you had a good day. I had a very busy one and I can't wait to hear what TG Banks and Esther had were up to throughout the day. Good evening, lady and gentleman mm -hmm. in blue mm -hmm. and red. Mm -hmm. Good to have you both. Good evening. Uh -huh. Not just blue, you didn't comment on the... Okay, uh, I actually like the mishmash. Yeah, thank you. There's this Afro... Okay. Afrocentric... Uh, I was going to say Afrocentric, but it's not that deep. There's Ankara wow. attached to your shirt, and then there's Nigeria's <laughs> map of Africa. Mm. You know, is that map of Africa? No, no, it's... A, yes, it's yes, exactly. Map of Africa. So I always have to do like this in my head to know that the right... People should Nigeria let me map. define what I'm wearing. Sorry, define I'm wearing a mixture of uh, centrifugal force. Oh, it's they... like... Ah, God. Let's continue the show. Ah, God. Wait, don't worry. The Just fashion is deep. Him. You won't understand what I'm saying. What Just... is... Okay. okay. Esther, how was your day? My day was good. What did you do today apart from radio? Yeah, size radio today. Um, I got to talk to a homeless man Aww. while coming to work. And um, I had reasons to be very grateful for how, you know, so somebody who was doing well for me because he spoke so well and I was shocked that he was homeless. Is the one around the hotel? Stop. I met this one at CMS and I was about to take a bike and All he right. saw me with some stuff and asked me for some. Okay. And it was the way he asked and how polite he was that Aww. I actually you know, got to talk to him. And I felt, for someone who was doing so well and had a silver spoon, basically, wow. and then life just turned. You know, I like that you're sharing this story because yeah. we know that Ash Wednesday began today for Catholics, so it's going to be 40 days of fasting. I saw a tweet by someone, and it really resonated with me. Mm. And the person said that rather than give up something, which is maybe giving up food mm. or yeah. giving up beef, so maybe not food, like beef or certain things for a duration of time, she decided to do 40 days of kindness. So she asked people on Twitter, hashtag 40 days of kindness, who's up with me? And basically, the idea was to do something kind and something nice and something sweet every for somebody day for food. Yeah. every day. So I'm not Catholic, but oh, we are all Catholic because Catholic means church. No, yeah, anyway. That's not the conversation today. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's always a good idea to do something good. It's always a good idea to make somebody smile. And, you know, when you do things for people who can't afford to pay you back, mm -hmm. it has a way, the universe has a way of repaying you, all right? But we're starting today's conversation on a bittersweet note. Yeah. Bitter mm -hmm. for a lot of people who do not, who believe that R. Kelly might be innocent and yeah. sweet for a lot of people, most especially those who have been victims of sexual assault and can totally relate with a lot of the women who had come out with come out saying me too now r kelly earlier in the day um, denied sexual allegations um, against him saying that he didn't do this stuff he said and i quote i didn't do this stuff this is not me r kelly told cbs this morning saying he was fighting for his life in an interview that scheduled that aired today now we have excerpts from the interview and he says whether they're old rumors new rumors future rumors not true, said R. Kelly, who became upset and emotional during the interview. Now, we know that the 52-year-old pleaded not guilty late last month in Chicago to 10 months, 10 counts, I beg your pardon, of aggravated criminal sexual abuse, and he spent three nights behind bars and was released after coming up with $100,000, 10% of the $1 million bill set in court. Kelly has been accused of sexual misconduct before now. We have excerpts of the interview. We'll take a look at the excerpts, and when we come back, the three of us will be talking about this on the show. Please don't go away. Real? Y'all trying to kill me? You killing me, man? And hmm. that was the outburst of Robert Sylvester Kelly, who has <laughs> been accused for sexual assault. Now, we know that there were several parts to Surviving R. Kelly documentary that came out with different women sharing accounts of R. Kelly having molested them physically, sexually, mentally, and emotionally, and from his reaction... He said he didn't do it. <laughs> uh, personally, I feel he has taken the allegations for granted for far too long. These allegations kept on coming and coming, and he didn't just have a reason to react. He had several reasons to react, but he never reacted. I felt he should have dealt with it long before now. There was even a time, the, the last allegation that was against him, he went to a club and he started spraying money and dancing with girls, showing, acting up as if he doesn't care that sends a wrong signal to people. If you look at the psychology of an average human being, especially in this part of the world where we are, and in the United States of America as well, they always find it easy to believe things, negative things against celebrities, most times. Ronaldo is another example. There is a woman who accused him of uh, molesting him and 
releasing her and raping her as well. Yes. Uh, he kept on denying from day one. He kept on saying it, and that helped his own fans to believe him as well. But uh, Kelly, he was quite quiet all, all okay. this while. Uh, before now, I had a different uh, view about the accusation, but watching him now seems, I don't know what to think. Seems okay. serious there, but a lot of people can act as well. I'm not saying he's acting, I'm just saying it's possible. I feel at the long run, I would love to see where this will, how this will pan out and where it will land in. Someone else that agrees with what you say, I saw a tweet um, by Marissa Carroll, I think, um, a tweet that said that Jim DeRogatis and I reached out to R. Kelly and his team again and again over the past 18 months. Every story, every allegation, he chose not to speak until now. You now, see? let me play devil's advocate. Devil's advocate in the sense that sometimes when, as a celebrity, you hear things that are not true about you, social media oftentimes says, ignore, don't answer mm, everything. No, this Just, is a, this is you know, ignore, because when you ignore, there's an assumption that when you ignore it, it dies down and yeah. that you're not feeling the fire. So what if, you know, his publicists came together and said, Akeli, they're saying these things about you, but just ignore. As it is with mm. other stories, you see, like we see in Nigeria, there's always this wave that starts. Mm -hmm. I mean, a few weeks ago, Ben, ben Rajivadi was under fire. Does anybody remember that now? <laughs> no. They always forget after, you after can, a while. You can't you can compare Ben Rajivadi's brand to Akeli's brand. Uh, it depends on how big you are as well. That's a fact. You need to look at it from this angle. Akeli, over time, kept quiet and it was just... There's also a story that says he was molested as a child. And a lot of people started feeling, okay, maybe it's something that he had in him somehow reacting to the things he faced as a child. So you have to look at it from that aspect as well. Keeping quiet is a no-no. This is a different case. If it's, I don't mean it's a case of uh, accusing a, a celebrity collecting money from a politician and decide to keep quiet. It is understandable. But the accusations are huge. They are big. You're molesting women, kidnapping them, putting them in your house, not allowing them, using them as sex objects. It's a big one. You can't keep quiet. Okay, so what if we put it this way? Still playing devil's advocate like um, Olive said. What if we say that R. Kelly kept quiet because, one, he had a lot of stuff that he didn't believe were true. I remember mm -hmm. there's a girl called um, Clary, Azil yeah. Clary. She's one of the two major characters. There's another second girl who like he said, girls. yes, he said he had close relationships with and he wasn't denying these two especially yeah. that they were with him and they dated him. Yeah. And I remember King asking him, the lady who was carrying out the interview saying, so you were with them? And he was like, I do legal, not my age. Yeah. So meaning you have to it's be legally, yeah. yes. So if you want to be with me, it's going to be your choice. What if he kept quiet because one, he saw a lot of stuff that wasn't true and he was just like, Okay, so let's keep seeing how this piles up. And then he was going through a lot of psychological trauma. You mentioned that a video of him w was shown on the internet in a yeah, club yeah. with girls. What if that was a man who was going through so much? All right. Look at it from this angle. Going through so much. And then he's like, you know what? Since you guys want to see it and make, it, make yourself believe that this is it, have what you want. It doesn't paint it as the truth. Yeah. Me speaking as somebody who sometimes has had to do things, ignore people and just go away from, okay, you know what, this is what you think, deal with it since you think that's what it is. But I know that that's not true. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm supporting Aaron Kelly, yeah, yeah, but I'm saying let's play the psychological card yeah. for my own, you know, um, experience as a person. Sometimes people will just want to treat you in a certain way, push you to a corner, but that doesn't mean that whatever they accuse you of is true or yeah. it actually happened. Okay. It, well, we, we need to let people understand this story. These are not new accusations. These are not new issues that just happened two years, five years ago. Some of these issues happened like in the 90s, early mm -hmm. 90s, mid 90s. These are things you trash immediately. Him keeping quiet, what has it led to? Look at what it has got, where it has gotten him and now he's now trying to explain. He's now trying to explain with all his heart, with all his strength. He's sweating, reacting like this on live television. Look at it. Adibin has been treating it as, as, as the thing was dropping, reacting to it gradually. There are, there are technical ways of reacting What's to it. What's also your take on him making reference to you know, the fact that he's, he's black and how America always tries to wait for... I was going for, to say that. ...for um, artists or yeah. black yeah, people, yeah, black yeah. successful people... Because yeah. as you get to a certain point and then they cut them out. I now, some other people made yeah, reference yeah. to the fact that yeah. those who felt that Bill Cosby didn't deserve all that came to him, there are people who were rooting for him and felt that it was still the same American system that ganged up against Bill Cosby. Uh, and some people feel that that is exactly... What is happening uh, to Akeli now? I what do you think? I don't want us to delve into color here. Yeah, there, there, there are possibilities that a lot of things that deal with blacks over there, they aggravate such issues. Yeah, there is, we have history of such happening, but I won't, let's leave that aside. 
color aside, when you're a celebrity, people love, most times they pretend to love you. They love you for your act. But once they hear any negative vibe around you, mm. they react and attack you. You forget that you've been celebrated. They just forget that part of you. And they want to believe the false rumors. That is, it is, it is all, the, all the out there in social, on social media. You see it happening over and over okay. again. That's why you need to be careful. Don't get carried away. Don't think because I'm a celebrity, I'm on television, I show everywhere, every now and then. You think people love you. The love for most celebrities are fake most times. People mm. tend to believe any negativity that comes around you. I've seen it, I've studied it, I've seen it happen and over and over again. Okay, so I know you don't want to dive into color, but I'm going to ask this question. Why is it that all the victims are always coming up in parks? Cosby, for example. Yeah. Morgan Freeman is having another showdown soon. Yeah. And it's already, it's going down so seriously. Everybody's going to see a build up later and we're going to see like a trend from Cosby, Robert Kelly, and then Morgan Freeman. And then maybe someone else will come after that. I now, knew. even though you don't want to dive into color, yeah. there are too many things yeah, showing us. You ask the us. question, where, when will a white popular guy get such treatment? Because at the end of the day, if we want to talk about it, we've had celebrities who are not black having issues like this. There's always a way out for it. It's either an out-of-court settlement mm -hmm. yeah. or a bill granted or something else. But we're saying that at some point, we've had people who have escaped. We've had those... Who, I remember reading a documentary, watching a documentary by DMX mm -hmm. when he got out of jail. Yeah. Buster Rhymes was there. Lloyd, um, Lloyd Bynes, I think, or Floyd was there, yes? Even Floyd Mayweather was actually in that same documentary. Mm -hmm. And he said something. He said we should thank God for the lives of people like Jaru, mm. who God just took out of the way for them not to face their own hardship and temptation like he did. Mm -hmm. Now, when somebody like that is saying stuff like that, you're going to know that these are people who have had to deal with things uh, Esther, in their profession as entertainers do you know, of color. Do you know at the time, Kelly's daughter came out to speak about this? And if you read in between the lines, she wasn't straightforward. But if you read smartly in between what mm. she said, she was trying to apologize on behalf of her dad for everything. And it was as if she believed he's guilty. Okay, good. We can also relate that to when Bob Marley's son also came out, when accusations were coming that time. Yeah. And then he also said he was going to support, he was also going to, he, he was in a way saying, okay, government should release his father and not make him go, th go through the things he went through. Yeah. But it was like the people felt if his son could come out and say that, yeah. that maybe Bob Marley was guilty, but le later evidence comes up. See, we're going to you say this. I'm saying... At the end of the day, you know, we're not going to discountenance the importance of speaking against sexual abuse, mm -hmm. you know, domestic violence and all sorts of abuse. We're not in any way going to discount the importance of such conversations. Yeah. In fact, we feel that the 16 days of activism between the 25th of November and the 10th of December is not enough to sure. talk about gender-based violence and also all other forms of violence. We must constantly speak up against it. We must stop victim shaming. We must, like in Nigeria, we must discourage a rape culture, which we already do have. Yeah. You know, but um, I'm not, I'm just going to leave this for the courts to decide. I'm just going to say that at the end of the day, I hope that the truth wins and that justice prevails and that justice not just be done, but be manifestly seen to be done by all. We know that, you know, we're going to follow the case as it progresses. Funny enough, in all of this, what's the takeout from this conversation yeah. was the composure of Gil King throughout the outburst. Mm -hmm. Her picture that she posted on her social media of, there was a photo of her while she was sitting, looking straight up, and R. Kelly was in front of her erupting in rage, and she was just composed. She has no reason And to be the angry. photo went viral, and everybody was saying, this level of composure, this level of professionalism. Mm. In fact, that was even the focus yeah. of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And for that, she, she gained a lot of... Um, she get a, a, a lot of accolades. But mm, Sally, she had no that. reason to be angry. Or? No, no, not even be about being angry. Just the fact that she was composed. It was shocking, was actually. Because yeah, yeah. We, she, she probably wasn't expecting that level of outburst. Yeah, right. yeah. But, yeah. but she was composed all through. At the end of the day, even if this matter were in Nigeria, if it were in Nigeria, Section 36 or 5 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, proves that, you know, it provides that he is innocent until proven guilty. guilty. So we're not in a position to decide how this case turns out eventually, but we'll just keep our fingers crossed and hope that the stories about sexual abuse will come to an end and that it will not be a color thing as well. So, you know, for those who are advocating that, that are play, raising the race card and saying that it's because he's a black man, we want to see everybody, black, white, you know, mixed, anybody who is involved or who supports abuse of any sort, 
being brought before a court of competent jurisdiction, tried and then convicted. But that's all we have for now. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.